welcome back to another video. You join me today here in Geneva, Switzerland for the Geneva International Motor Show 2019. It is insane to even be saying those words. I am overwhelmed to be here. It is absolutely crazy. But my flight home departs in around about eight hours time, so I haven't got long to explore this massive venue. So I don't want to waste any more time. Let's check out what's there. So I've made a straight beeline for what I think is one of the craziest cars at the show, Koenigsegg Jesko. So the name of the car has come from Christian von Koenigsegg's father. It's his first name and the code name for this was Ragnarok. So it was only just unveiled that it was Jesko yesterday when this car got unveiled in front of Jesko von Koenigsegg himself. And this is an unreal car. You can see lots of resemblance to the Regera, especially when the panels are all down. But this combines the Regera looks, but more track focused and certainly less comfortable because Koenigsegg are trying to go for two sort of approaches to their cars. They'll have one comfortable range, which is the Regera, which suitably there is one over there, but you won't be able to see that from this angle. And then having the Yesco be the more track focused hardcore variant. So this is the predecessor to the Agera RS. Of course, that's a limited production car, limited to 25 units. I don't know how many of these cars there'll be or if there'll be variants afterwards, such as there was the Agera and then followed by the Agera RS and things like the one-to-one -one as well, based off that line. But you can see resemblance of all Koenigsegg cars. This is basically the ultimate model. The iconic doors, the top mounted spoiler from the one-to-one, -one, the Regera shape, and then the combustion engine, which pays tribute to the Agera RS. Now this car, certainly powerful, 1,600 horsepower, creating 1,000 kilos of downforce. It will be absolutely mental on a track, which is what Koenigsegg have tried to base this for. But now checking out the front, the styling, is amazing. Looks very similar to the Regera from the front end, but a lot more aggressive with this massive diffuser and more canards on the side as well. But this is one of only a few mental cars here. If you just look over there, Pagani, here, Zenvo, there are insane cars everywhere. So I've got to rush around and try and catch them all for you guys. Finished in this sort of matte green colour. I think that picks up quite well on camera with the acid green accents as well. It is amazing to think that this is a road car. Aston Martin's first special project with Red Bull and it's finally coming to fruition. These will start being delivered very soon now that they have actual engines in them and the cars are fully made road legal. These cars have defied the rules of what's legal on the roads. Every single piece of technology is put into this car. They had to change rules, defy boundaries to get this thing to even be on the road. If we look round the back, you can see the exhaust there and where the number plate sits. It means that the number plate would get so hot it would melt. So they actually had to go through the government and get special permission to make the number plate out of metal. It's crazy the levels they went to to get this thing onto the road. But this is like nothing else on the road. You can notice just by where the seating position is the massive carbon fibre sills that you actually have to step onto the seat and lift yourself in like in a race car. This car is actually a race car for the roads. It is mental. And sat next to that, Valkyrie AMR Pro, the second special project that Aston Martin did in collaboration with Red Bull. AMRB002, this car's nickname. And that one, 001. I don't think this is at production stage like the Valkyrie, so I doubt this has an engine. I think it's just a model but it just doesn't look real. Look how low this is to the ground. If it goes on any track, I'm sure this will scrape. Surely no track's that smooth. It is absolutely mental. 
every piece of aerodynamic elements on this car is like nothing I've seen before. So low, so poised. And the design elements are just mental. But the car I really wanted to show you is this. Aston Martin's third special project in collaboration with Red Bull. This is sort of a baby Valkyrie and you can really see the resemblance between the two. But I don't have time to talk about every single car in this video. There are simply too many things here at Geneva that I don't even have time today to have a look around all the cars. I'm literally picking manufacturers that I want to go and take a look at. So if you do want to have a little tour of this car, as well as some of the other main cars from Geneva, then make sure to subscribe and check out some other videos from the channel. I'll be doing first look videos on quite a few of the cars here whilst I take a little look around the show. So make sure you do subscribe and you look out for that. Right, you guys are going to have to let me know what you think of this one. Because because I am kind of lost for words. This car is interesting to say the least. It's obviously a Chiron made by Mansory. And Mansory have quite a few iconic elements, such as their exposed carbon fibre they add to the cars, which this thing is absolutely dripping in. Also has a Mansory badge at the front, because when you modify a Bugatti, Bugatti disown you from the company. So this is no longer a Bugatti, it is actually a Mansory Chiron or whatever they've decided to call it down there because obviously they won't be allowed to call it a Chiron. So the real question is, is it worth getting disowned by Bugatti and having this instead? I simply don't know. It is a monstrosity really. Ultra blue sort of interior. The paintwork does look very good though, it really flecks in the light and it does have these Mansory, very traditional style wheels that we've seen on quite a few of the Mansory cars. I must admit the styling is very wacky, but it is done well to the extent that it looks like it kind of belongs here, but it doesn't mean that I like it. It also has a roof scoop and some extra canards basically all over it. This car is mad with aero. It is very, very interesting just coming around to the back to try and take a look at what they've done so it seems like they've got rid of the big centerpiece light which was very controversial so i'm sure a lot of you guys like that but i was personally getting used to the big light bar and especially seeing the light bar on other cars like la Futur noir i was certainly getting used to it so it is now a little bit weird to not see it on this car but let me know what you think in the comments down below is this car good or is it not and is it worth disowning your chiron to get this. So we've managed to get onto the stand and I must admit the rear element of this car, it doesn't look too bad. I think for me the only thing that I'm not a fan of is the weird pattern in the exposed carbon fibre. But it's wacky but it is cool at the same time. With this blue pinstriping going all the way around the car it does really tie in to the interior which very interestingly if you check this out, I don't know if it picks up too well on here but you can see just there, the interior is sparkly, which is a very interesting and slightly weird touch for a hypercar, but that's the whole point of Mansur, I guess, just to make it your own, make something different, and this is certainly that. the stunning Hurricane Evo. I am in love with the looks of this car. I think it's in Verde Mantis, but this car has only just been released for the show. I'm a massive fan of the looks, but part of me does think, what is the need for the car? Manufacturers like Ferrari have just released the F8 Tributo, and that car is a completely different car. This is still a Hurricane. Lamborghini is still staying along the same lines, which part of me thinks they need to move on but then seeing this, it is a very hard decision because this does look very good. The exhaust from the Puffermante and as well, noticeably, a little wing on there. The styling is just amazing, but part of me does think it is quite pointless. I am absolutely in awe of this car. Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster. When they released the SVJ, I always thought it needed a Roadster variant and here it is and it's the colour that gets it for me. The colour is perfect. I don't know the exact paint code, but contrasting with the white interior, it is just incredible. Every angle of this car I am in love with. Dripping in carbon fibre as well. 
with that stunning white interior. Obviously not very practical, but in a car like this, it really doesn't matter. Wow, I am absolutely obsessed. I'll just show you the back end. What an insane looking car. It is the color that gets it for me with the white accents even coming around the back there and on the rear diffuser. Wow, I don't even know what to say apart from wow, this car is absolutely amazing. I am genuinely overwhelmed at the size of this event. It is massive. The only thing I've ever had to compare this to, the only motor show I've ever attended before, is Autosport at the NEC. And it is nothing like this. The only thing that is vaguely similar is that this is in what is essentially a warehouse. But this is next level. Everything you see is pristine. I was expecting all the photos and stuff on Instagram to be extremely heavily edited, the lighting to be quite poor, but it is perfect. You can see these cars in amazing detail, carbon fiber comes out incredibly well in photos. But this event is so fast and there's so much here, ranging all the way from Pagani Huayra Roadster to a Renault Zoe. There's so much here that I've had to really pick and choose what I want to come and see today. So luckily, this is the second day of the show. So yesterday, quite a few cars got unveiled, so I do know some of the cars are here. So I'm trying to target those so that I don't run out of time before I have to catch my flight home. Absolutely loving the Bugatti stand. Three very unique Bugattis here. And I'm especially excited to see the Devo. This car obviously released at Monterey Car Week. I didn't really know what to think of it back then. The design's obviously very different from the Chiron, which it's based on. But now seeing it in person, I am loving this thing. I especially like the headlights, how they are so different to anything else. We've also got La Futur Noir. I will be doing a little video on this, talking about the significance of this car, because this car is very special. The most expensive car in the world, 16.7 million pounds. And finally, we've got the Chiron 110 Arms Edition, celebrating 110 years of Bugatti, and this incredible paintwork. I think this has got to be one of the best stands here at Geneva. It is amazing to be able to get up close and take a look at some of these cars. I did come here earlier when I filmed that car and it was absolutely rammed. So it is good to see it slightly clearing out now so we can get a little bit closer look at these incredible cars. So we've just stumbled across the new R8. This thing looks very good. And check out the size of those exhausts. It's crazy, but the one thing that I do like is the facelift at the front. The design is very nice. Such a good upgrade over the last generation of R8. If you ask me what my highlight of today would be, I genuinely don't think I could ever top this. Stood on the Bugatti stand, surrounded by three extremely rare, beautiful Bugattis. What a way to round up today. What unbelievable timing to catch the McLaren Speedtail coming out of Intercontinental Geneva. The car was displayed in the show yesterday and was taken to this hotel presumably for a McLaren event and it's being loaded up on this trailer right now to be brought back to the United Kingdom. That meant that we were going to miss it today so it's so fortunate that we've managed to bump into it. So in a crazy turn of events as you may have just seen we've ended up at Intercontinental Geneva and it's fair to say there are some amazing cars outside. So we'll start it off with this LFA Nurbo Ring Edition. Limited edition variant of the LFA. Sat behind that, same owners, Pagani Zonda. And then over here, 720S Spider and a 600 LT. 
Now both of these cars are here because McLaren are actually based from this hotel, hence why the speed tail was just up there. And then these two and the RS6, all owned by the same owner. we are ending the day amazingly. Full carbon red P1 on the roads here in Geneva, wow. That was mad, I've always wanted to see that P1. That's the whole reason I wanted to come down to this hotel today because this is where the P1's been staying. But this is where I will be rounding up today's video, but not right here. We did go to another hotel, I wasn't expecting to come here, so I did already end the video there. So I'll put you back to previous time, we'll end the video there. So as you can probably tell from the apparent change of scenery, we've now come outside of the event and come down to the Crown Plaza Hotel because this is here. Pagani Huayra, all the way from Italy. Really cool car, this is actually a Pagani press car and it was driving around the Swiss Alps earlier this week on a road trip down to Geneva. Really nice spec on this to be fair. Red with the gold rims and then loads of carbon fibre as well. Awesome car and a very cool way to sort of round up the trip here in Geneva. I still find it amazing that I can come all the way here for a day trip to Geneva to check out the cars here at the motor show and still go home and then sleep in my own bed again. But I really hope you have gone on to enjoy the content here at Geneva. I have really enjoyed filming it. The motor show has been everything that I hoped it would be. But make sure you head over to my Instagram and check out some photos from the day as well as subscribing to the channel because there'll be loads more content from Geneva. I filmed multiple videos today so hopefully they'll be going live shortly. But anyway, I really hope you have gone on to enjoy the video. If you have, please make sure to smash it a like, subscribe if you're new and as always I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.